What's happening, film friends? Dave the Film Junkie here. All right, here's my spoiler review for Wonder Woman 1984. That's right, guys. I mean, it's it is. You know what? I, you know what I'm actually liking. I mean, uh, obviously, this is like a whole new experiment that's happening when it comes to the whole dual release on HBO Max and movie theaters. Is the fact that people are just like watching it today, you know? And I've been seeing people criticize it. Uh, mainly positive stuff happening. Um, yeah, there is a new wave. A new wave of uh, reviews have have uh, have came in, and yeah, uh, it's you look at the Rotten Tomato score. It's now at sixty nine. I mean, it dropped like a like twenty points. But you know, like I, like I've been saying, guys, it's like Rotten Tomatoes has lost its power when it comes to streaming. There's gonna be so many people streaming it, and yes, international people. I really hope that you'll be able to see it. I mean, if your movie theater's open or, you know, you're, you feel okay about doing that, please do so. Go out there and support this movie. Figured I'd wear my uh, 2015 Marty hat for the in, for the occasion since it's, I mean, you look at some of the posters for 184, does kind of look like this. Anyways, guys, so let's uh, talk about some things. I have a list here. I'm not going to go through the whole damn movie, <laughs> but I, yes, I did watch it again. I watched it. Um, I had a double feature. I watched the first Wonder Woman and then, of course, uh, Wonder Woman 84 just to like, why not? Why not do that after, you know, obviously I'm doing a, the quarantine thing, but luckily I got to talk to a lot of family today, so that was good. So let's get started with um, with everything. I'll go in chronological order, but um, I did tell you guys in my initial review that, yes, when it comes to this, I'll be able to finally, you know, I'll be able to tell you guys a lot more of my disappointments in the movie. Uh, and I will say, watching it a second time, it made the parts that I liked, I liked them more, and the parts I didn't like even more. So it just, like, added, it just added back up to, like, all of that, you know. So I'm pretty much, when it comes to my disappointments and my and my truly, my, my likes of the movie, now they're just stronger when it comes to everything. So when it starts off, obviously... We start off in Timascara. We already knew this. I mean, it's not even spoilery, but the reason why I wanted to talk about it is because it's a fantastic scene with little Diana going up with, the, with these big Amazonians that are already grown, and she gets taught a lesson, of course. You, you see Connie Nielsen. You see Robin Wright. But the thing that disappointed me the most is that's it. <laughs> that's it. I'm like, we never go back to Timascara? Ah, man. It's like I was like interviewing Connie Nielsen in this whole time, not realizing that she's barely in this movie. But then watching the first Wonder Woman, it's like, yeah, she's not in it a whole lot there either. But I mean, obviously it's more because it's it's an origin story. But I just was like hoping because she was taught a lesson to not take shortcuts, not cheat by uh, by what's her, by Robin Wright's character. I'm totally uh, drawing a blank, but you know, she like prevents her from like winning the uh the game um just because she you know takes a little bit of a shortcut but i mean you know there was a life lesson there there was a lesson there and i get what the theme of the movie was it kind of leads into the whole theme of the movie but i was just kind of hoping there was going to be something something going back to themiscure a little bit but there was nothing and i was pretty disappointed about that i was because when i saw the trailers and and they they they, they went heavy on the cutting back and forth of like little diana running and then you know, modern Diana running. I thought, okay, they're going to be jumping, aren't they? They're going to be jumping in this movie. No jumping. That was it. So I'm like, damn it, man. Where is that Amazonian spinoff? Please. Themyscira, let's let's bring that in there. But um, obviously, you know, and then it starts catching us up. You do see a, a picture of Etta, um, who is older, was older, you know. So they, they do try to establish, I guess, this is a direct sequel to... Uh, to Wonder Woman. Um, I'm going to have a whole separate video on talking about BVS canon and the connectivity right after this, or, you know, it'll be posted after this. So look forward to that. I'm going to do that in a separate video. And then of course that leads into the, uh, you know, her doing voiceover. And then she's just like saving random people from goofball things, which is like, okay, cool. You know, it's whatever. She swoops in, she swoops in, she swoops in. Obviously nobody's going to get her on a fucking cell phone because they're not invented yet. So why not? And, you know, it was interesting. It was interesting. And then, of course, the mall sequence, which a lot of people, when you see it, when you first saw it, it was like, ooh. But then, I mean, she does a very good job of, like, killing all the cameras and then saving the day and, and uh, you know, saving that little girl. I mean, that girl must have had a good old time getting slid right into a big stuffed animal. 
But, uh, you know, I could totally tell you, I mean, it was like cheese, cheese, cheese. And it was just like, all right, but I'm okay. It's, it's whatever. It's not bothering me too much. Not at all. It's, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. But then of course it all leads into the plot and the whole stone thing. You meet Barbara and it's already established that she's just, you know, she's nerdy. She's, she, uh, she literally like power walks to, uh, to work and everything like that, you know? And then she's totally mesmerized by Diana who wears cheetah high heels. And by the way, it's like Diana, it's like they really go heavy on the fact that she's lonely. And it's just like, I mean, I get that, but this is 70 years later. I mean, I'm like going, I, I mean, does she have any friends? Has she taken on, you know, maybe has she had a one night stand? I mean, any like little boyfriends that maybe, or is it just Steve or nobody? I, I was, that's, they really emphasize it. You know, literally she's like at an outdoor cafe at night and she's just like, Are you, is it just you? And the waiter of course, like takes away the, the, the dishes and the, and the glass on the other side, because you know, she's alone. And I'm like 70 years of this. Ah, it's a little weird, but anyways, so we do all that. And then of course, when it comes to the stone and, um, Let's see. Yeah, you got Barbara. You got Max. Like I said, Pedro Pascal is a beast in this. Pedro Pascal and watching it again, I'm like, he's just a beast. He shines. He shines. I mean, they all shine in their own moments, but it just feels like Pascal just anytime he's on screen, he shines. And you, they really established that, of course, with his son. And um, and then, of course, there was like a nice little like, uh, wait a minute, uh, Stag Stag Industries. Okay, I was like, uh, ah, uh, huh. Oh, yeah. So you got a nice little, you know, mention of another DC character, villain-esque character. So I was like, cool. I mean, that makes sense in the world of Max Lord. Why wouldn't he not be talking um, uh, to him? So that was kind of cool to see that. And of course, he's promising, like, um, promising, promising. And see, the thing, when it comes to the stone, I mean, obviously, this is how Steve Trevor comes back. This is how uh, Barbara turns into Cheetah. Because they both have the stone and they literally like, you know, just make a wish. It's like a wishing stone. I mean, it's funny because, you know, some people might be like, really? But then I'm going, well, that's pure 80s right there. I mean, how many times have you seen like some kind of ancient fucking stone or rock or something like that? Or you just wish and something happens or they're looking, you know, it made sense for the time period. It really did. But, you know, obviously when um, um, Diana's holding on to it, and she goes, she knows exactly what she'd wish for and her hair blows. And it's like, oh, and then uh, eventually Barbara does that, too. She wants to be like Diana, which, uh, you know, she wants to be sexy and, you know, just totally just pretty much have that presence and everything. And pretty much the next day she just wakes up and she's hot pretty much lets her hair down nicely, goes, you know, what? I don't need this stupid skirt. Look at my little skin tight pants anyways. But um, so, yeah, but Max. Max Lord. Okay. This is where I was like, I really dug what they did with Max Lord. Okay. In this movie, because he was really, you know, power hungry and he really thought like a capitalist because it's like, okay, I've been chasing down this stone that could just make everything, all my dreams come true, all the wishes and everything. It's, you know, so, but, but, but I'm only granted one wish. No, fuck that. How do I capitalize on that? I wish. To be the stone. That's exactly what he does. He wishes to be the stone. So now he's the guy that's granting a wish. Of course, it's wreaking havoc on his health and, you know, his mental stability. Yeah, we see that with progress on, which is what's great also about this movie, about him. I mean, they really, really did a great job with Max Lord. And I just fit that, that totally fit his character of just capitalizing on a, a magical stone that only grants you one wish. It's like, okay, well, how do I capitalize to get, you know, what, what I want? Because anytime he granted other people's wish, it, other people wishes, he took something in return. So it all, it all just, uh, it all just made sense with all that. And then of course, Steve Trevor comes back. I thought that was a little quick, a little weird how he just made his way to that party <laughs> at the, at the museum or whatever. And then he's just like, you know, he just tells Diana, hey, and then says a couple of things. I wish we had more time. I mean, I guess maybe I just wanted it to be a little more drawn out. But at the same time, when I watched it for the second time, I went, nah, it would have, we don't, there, I guess just t tackling it in one scene was good enough. So, of course, it's cool. 
And uh, their chemistry is great. Like I said, Chris Pine and uh, and Margot Robbie. I mean, Margot Robbie? <laughs> Gal Gadot. Jeez. Whoa. Just totally just huh? right there. But uh, you guys get what I'm saying? I just totally uh, did that right now. You know, that happens. But uh, no, they're great. Um, and, of course, she's, like, showing them everything. And, um, yeah, I mean, he's mesmerized by all this by all this modern technology. I mean, 1984 technology, it's, uh, which totally makes sense. It's like, yeah, compared to where he was from to now, I mean, everything is pretty damn awesome. And then, but then of course it gets to the point where they have to, uh, fly to Cairo. I think it is Egypt. And, um, you know, he's totally like mesmerized. Like, wow, we could just get to, you know, fly there one shot. Sure we can. And this is where it's just like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> Who gives a fuck? Because, you know, it, it kind of reminds me of um, there's a, uh, a scene in Terminator 3, Rides of the Machines, where um, what's her name's character just randomly goes like, he's like, yeah, we could take that plane. My dad taught me how to fly. And it's just like, all right, then that's how she knows how to fly that plane. But I'm kind of going like when it comes to this, I'm like, Steve Trevor knew how to fly planes back in the 1920s. 19 hundreds, tens, 1910s, you know, 70 years of technology. He just gets in this plane and goes, okay, hmm, click, 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 fuel. There it is. You know, it's all labeled, guys. <laughs> I mean, I was kind of like, all right. And then they try to establish too because Diana hasn't fly, flown yet. And then they talk about that. And it was just kind of like, that was a weird question to ask. And then... Here's something that I could have done without because, but I get it. They were trying to introduce all anything that, that has to do with Wonder Woman. And it's like, how do you make the invisible jet work? Well, this is how you do it. You get up into a jet first off. Okay. And Diana is just going to pull some magic right out of her ass. Okay. Cause well, her dad is Zeus and her dad was pretty crafty when making a whole Island disappear. Okay. Nobody could see Themyscira. He did that with his magic. So Diana was trying to do that, but she practiced on a coffee mug, <laughs> apparently. So she was like, I done it only once, made a coffee mug disappear. But then she was able to make the jet become invisible. Cool. I guess the fireworks are cool. Very cool energy. I, I'll give you that. But I just was not really about the whole invisible chat thing. I'm just, that was just me. It was a little like uh, a little, a little too much. Uh, and then of course, as it goes on, we get that cool action sequence on the, uh, the highway, which was good. I mean, the running, yeah, like I said, the running is a little wonky still. It's fine. But for fuck's sake, for fuck's sake, I mean, as cool as like a lot of that stuff was, it's a good action sequence. It has to end with kids playing in the middle of the highway and their neglectful parents not giving a shit about them. <laughs> this was so, this was too tropey. And I'm like, ah, did you really have to end this whole sequence like this? Because I hate it. I hate it. Even watching it again, I, I hated it. Okay, so in the distance, these kids are totally clueless of the caravan of fucking trucks that are loud are just speeding down the highway. Parents, in a, maybe they wanted their kids to die. I don't know. It's a little strange. These kids are just, you know, playing ball in the middle of a fucking highway with these trucks that are coming in the distance that you could probably easily hear. So Steve Trevor shoots a little missile. <laughs> out where Diana lassos it, gets pulled by it, and then swings, grabs two kids. Well, no, no, she swings, drops the bomb. Got to make sure the bomb doesn't hurt anybody. Grabs onto the windmill, swings in, gets the kids, and then loses her grip. And guess what? They tumble hard on that highway. Those kids have brain damage now. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a rough roll okay i don't care what anybody says that was a rough roll that they took on that highway holy shit and it was just like dude, dude 
that's what I, I hate. I don't like that. I don't like the way it ended. Fuck that. I don't, I don't, I don't really get it. I, eek, you know, it's all whatever. Um, okay. Saving the kids. And then of course, uh, Diana is losing her powers. That's one of the things that's happening for Steve to be there. She is not her strength. So it's kind of, you know, Superman two esque. Yeah. Which we always comparing it to Donner stuff. It is kind of like uh, a little bit of that. That's why she's like, you know, got scratches on her. She's bleeding and everything. I mean, the like I said, first hour, first hour or so, you know, it's a little choppy. And then I think like midpoint, I think it really just in midpoint for me of the movie. I was kind of looking at it. it. That's where I say it, it finds its groove. And I don't really have that many complaints. I mean, yeah, the way that action scene ends, I fucking can't stand that. It's just like, come on, really? But uh, then it, when it gets going and everything, and there's like another thing too, where like Barbara, Diana, and Steve meet up at this one guy at uh, I think it's at a Galaxy Records or some kind of record shop. It's just kind of funny because Barbara goes, "Huh, oh, that was quick," because they showed up from Cairo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, that's just I don't need to nitpick any of that. But um, it was just kind of funny how like that one line of dialogue, like, "Wow, that was quick," and then that yeah, let's move forward. Anyways, so they're learning stuff about it, and of course, Barbara doesn't want to lose what she has because she now is a confident, sexy, strong woman. So it makes sense. But uh, yeah, Diana Diana's losing her power, and then of course, uh, when it comes to after um, after the the White House scene. They're out on the uh, street and everything's going crazy because, you know, Max Lord has gone crazy. He's wishing he's he's giving everybody he's making everybody's wishes come true. And that's just wreaking havoc to everything. And this that's where I like when I first watched it, I was like, what does this remind me of? What does this remind me of? What, and, and I'll get to it in a minute here. But so then they're out there and then Steve being the soldier that he is and then the common sense guy that he is just kind of goes, hey. You need to, you know, you need to renounce your wish because you are losing your powers. The world needs you right there. I have lived already. Okay. I love you, but still it's just going to have to happen. And then it's a very powerful and really good scene between the both of them. I mean, congratulations to gal for, she got a lump in my throat. I mean, it was, it was sad. And then, you know, one last kiss and then she just pulls away and like, kind of like anger. And she just, you know, she's crying and she's like about to just start running and she just goes, I renounce my wish. And there she goes. All of a sudden you see her wounds like pretty much heal up and she just goes for it. And that goes right into first flight of Wonder Woman, which is kind of cool. It is cool. You know, obviously we, when we see the first flight of, you know, Superman. It's all fine and gravy. But we see the first flight of uh, technically of uh, Wonder Woman, and it's good. It's good. You know, it's got the Hans Zimmer score. She's kind of learning how to do her thing. And then when she wants to take a wicked uh, turn, she rides the lightning a little bit. And it was like, all right, there's a lightning scene right there. I dig it. Totally dig it. But yeah, it's good. And then, of course, you know, she gets the, um, the golden um, suit that she's had in her closet for a bit from uh, Asteria. The, uh, the ultimate uh, Themyscirian warrior. Um, so she, I don't, do they explain exactly why she has it? I mean, I guess she just finds it. I know in, this, in the book she does just find it, but um, so then, yeah, she just gets that on because it's like, yeah, I'm going to have to get that fucking badass armor on. And then she takes out a lot of people. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, after everything's going crazy, you know, Barbara gets transformed again because she wants to be an apex predator so she gets two wishes is this because i forgot eh, i forgot the details on that but she does get two wishes <laughs> and i'm i'm wondering if there was like a transformation scene in there where she just argh, american werewolf and love you know is there like a scene that was cut out they thought it was too scary maybe maybe i'm wondering i'm wondering if the transformation was cut out. I'm thinking it was. I'm thinking it was. So it's going to be interesting to see. And um, so, yeah. So then, of course, we have the fight. And like I said, Cheetah looks great. They did a good job blending. You got CGI and makeup all at the same time. I thought they did a pretty fantastic job on that. She looked great. So they're fighting it out. And then you're like, oh, man, she's not letting up. And Diana's going to electrocute her? What? We're going to see a villain death in here. 
nope. <laughs> Barbara lives. It's fine. I was like, okay, interesting. I thought maybe like, oh yeah, she's going to do it. She's going to do it, you know, because let's face it, that happens in a lot of these, but not here. Not here. And then of course, you know, Max is going nuts and just granting everybody a wish with the particle beam shit and all this stuff. And he's just like talking to everybody, granting everybody their wishes all around the world. And it's wreaking all havoc. There's nukes going around everywhere because the president wanted more nukes. Russia's like, fuck you guys. And it's pretty intense. And then all of a sudden, bam, beautiful lie kicks in. Huh. It like, at first I was like, oh yeah, shit. Even this time, I'm like, it's actually, where Hans Zimmer put a beautiful lie in this was actually pretty damn perfect because then Diana goes on a spiel about truth and all that stuff. And, you know, beautiful lie of truth, you know, she realizes like, you know, when she, it would, it would have just been a lie if she would have kept Steve around because he served his purpose. He died where he was meant to die. And if I brought him back, it would be a beautiful lie. Perfect. Perfect Hans Zimmer and Patty. I'll give you I commend you guys for that one. So, I mean, it really works. And you're seeing everybody and even Max is going, what the fuck? And as he's just like, keeps on going. But then all of a sudden he realizes like the, the lasso of the truth is wrapped around his, uh, his foot. And then all of a sudden he remembers his son, realizes like, oh my God, my son, my son, my son. And uh, then ends it all. Ends it all. Everything just kind of goes away. Everybody renounces their wishes and everything. And pretty much it all just goes. And I was kind of going like, okay, what the fuck does this all, what does this remind me of? What is Bruce Almighty. That's what it is. Bruce Almighty. Yeah, because he was granting everybody's fucking pretty much everybody's wishes. And it was wreaking havoc at the end of that movie. And I was like, there it is. I knew it reminded me of something. And it was Bruce Almighty little bit there i'm not i'm not shitting on wonder woman 84 by no means i'm just saying it was like something reminded me of it but and then of course you know we have the uh, i'm gonna do a video on the whole post credit scene with linda carter of course as hysteria i'll just do like a whole thing about that because i've already been talking way too long on the spoiler review guys but that's pretty much it um like i said watching it a second time i would say the first half is rough and then it starts leading into like oh okay you're really figuring out what we're wanting to do here and then once it does second half i'm pretty damn good with pretty damn good with like i said i i have my little gripes which i mentioned here you know my little disappointments and everything and i think uh when all is said and done i'll probably uh put it in my ranking and i'll do a video about that just see where it ranks up um obviously you know i'd like the first wonder woman better you know, and I, and I even guessed that that was going to be the case, that I was going to like it better. And I'm sure a lot of you guys, but like I said, there's no, I'm not shitting on Wonder Woman 84. I'm like, please watch it on HBO Max. Watch it as many times as you want. If you liked it, yeah, watch it every fucking day. If you didn't, watch it a second time. See if it changes your mind. It's always a second view in is always better. And then, like I said, if you can watch it in beautiful, big, huge IMAX, please do so. I wish I would. I would, even though I've seen it twice, if I could, I would go watch it again on IMAX just to see it on the big screen. Maybe it'll just be a whole different experience. So anyways, guys, so there you go. That is uh, my thoughts. Now, spoilery thoughts on Wonder Woman 85. Let me know your thoughts about it down below. What did you think about all the stuff I said? Hit that like, thumbs up button if you'd be so kind. Subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you know when I'm doing this stuff. And then, of course, uh, follow me in the sock meds down below, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We also got Patreon if you want to help out the pirate ship. I would appreciate it. And, of course, merchandise right there down below. All right, guys? All right. Gal, hit me right there, man. Pulling on those heartstrings. I love it. All right, guys. Talk to you later.